present, I'd like to have to meet our teacher of our eighth grade here. Jennifer. And we have a very favored uh, eighth grade students from St. Peter's School, President Reagan. Very, very pleased to have you with us. Here are our students. Well, I'm pleased to see all of you. Is this sign? Well, I'm very pleased, and I understand. Someone once said that civics class, uh, that's where you study what you read in the paper the day before. But uh, I know better than that, having been in civics classes myself. We don't have very much time here together, so I think better than me trying to make any kind of a speech to you at all, what we should do is get to a dialogue and back and forth. I just came from speaking to a great meeting of teachers and educators there in Chicago and told them about our proposal in Washington for a tuition tax credit for parents of children going to schools like this. And that's my civic contribution for the day. So why don't you ask me uh, any questions you might have? Don't be bashful now. Yeah. Questions. <laughs> Raise your hand. How soon will the tuition tax credit benefit us? How much seat? How soon? Yeah, how soon? For the benefit of us. the benefit of the tax credit? Well, we're going to phase it in. It would start if, of course, the Congress passes the legislation we're presenting. It would start being phased in in 83, that's next year, and uh, uh, be completed by 85. Uh, we have to kind of take it easy to start with because of our budget deficits and the problem we're trying to solve on that. What if the tax deduction is passed, what kind of influence will the government have on private schools? What? If the tax deduction is passed, what kind of, what kind of influence will the government have on private schools? Well, the, there won't be, this will not allow any government interference in any way in, in education because the aid is going directly to the parents of children who are, who are going to the schools. Uh, so this will not lead to any government direction or interference in it in any way in education. If that's if that was the meaning of your question. Mr. President, do you think the government will ever let the tax payers take the taxpayer tax credit? All that clicking of cameras. I'm going to have to come a little closer to here. Do you think the government will ever let the taxpayer tax credit? Did you say the? The air traffic controllers. The air traffic controllers? Will the government ever hire them, the ex-air? There were some uh, who have been taken back and were hired back because uh, they were able to establish that they were pressured into leaving. And uh, now uh, uh, the needs are being met very rapidly in the towers with applicants and trainees who are training to become air controllers and uh, I don't think there'll be any further uh, move in that direction. And, uh, the law provides that anyone who is, is discharged from government service is ineligible. Uh, we, we gave a waiver that they could get jobs, uh, a waiver to that law so that they could get jobs in other jobs in government if they wanted. But, um, we had to, our loyalty had to go to those who stayed in and kept the airlines flying. Mr. President, you think inflation will be brought under control? If so, how would you go about doing it? Well, we've already begun doing it. Inflation was 12.4% uh, when we began our administration. And it's figured every month and then it's averaged over the year. So it ended the year of 1981 with an average of 8.9%, down from 12. But the last six months now, inflation has been running at four and a half percent or less. And so the answer to it is, of course, now resolving this recession and getting people back to work and all. But uh, I look for inflation to continue down and getting even less, and of course, the ultimate is to get it to, to zero. 
So um, it, it is very much under control now. Do you all understand really what inflation means to your families and to all of you in purchasing power? I'll bet you do because you're in the civics class here. But inflation, really, we think about it as high prices. Actually, the high prices are just a reflection of the lowered value of the money. It means when it was 12.4% that at the end of the year, the dollar would buy 12.4% less than it would buy at the beginning of the year. Well, now the dollars are only shrinking by 4.5% cents out of the dollars. So we'll do better. President, when do you think there will be more jobs for people? More jobs for people. More jobs for people? The answer to that has to be making it possible for the economy to expand. And by that I mean with this great unemployment. We're down now to where many industries are only working at a fraction of their capacity to produce. And this has been, I think, because the government over the years has been taking an increasing amount out of the earnings of the people and gross national product that reduces the ability of the private sector to expand and produce the jobs that we need for our people. Now, unemployment, unfortunately, is the last thing that gets resolved when you come out of a recession. It's the last thing that catches up. But it does catch up. This was why we passed our tax program last year, that we phase in three installments of taxes, 5% uh, last October 1st, be 10% cut in the income tax in July, and another 10% cut next year. And at the same time, we cut the taxes for business with regard to their ability to modernize their plant and equipment and keep up with modern technology. Today, one of the reasons that we're not so competitive as we could be and used to be with other countries like West Germany and Japan is because they have invested and they are producing with much more modern equipment. I have been in steel plants in Taiwan and in Japan and uh, here in our own country and I have seen the difference. It isn't that their workers are any better, it's that they got better tools. Now, I think that the program that we're embarked on, reducing of government spending, and reducing of taxes at the same time, is going to lead and is leading now to a recovery where there will be this modernization. And that is the only way to provide jobs for our people. Incidentally, in spite of the fact that the reported that March unemployment went up. Uh, the statisticians in Washington have funny ways of counting. There are, or were in March, actually 88,000 fewer people uh, unemployed than there were in February. And there were 525,000 more people employed than there were in February. But, Mr. President, what actions can you take in regards to the Federal Reserve Board about lowering the high interest rates? But at this point, first of all, the Federal Reserve Board is totally autonomous. The, uh, there is no administration and there's no government that can uh, tell them do this or do that. They're absolutely independent under the law. And it's true that they have had a policy over recent years of treating recessions like this with variations of the money supply, releasing a lot of money into the market, and uh, then inflation went up as well as interest rates and so forth. Uh, I have to say right now, they're holding to a, to a very sound policy of the normal increase in the money supply to keep pace with our own natural growth. The interest rates are up now simply because of the fear on the part of the money markets that inflation won't stay down where it is. That as it's done in the past, it'll go back up again. And we're trying to convince them that isn't so. And I think pretty soon when we announce, uh, when we can announce a bipartisan agreement on what we're going to do with regard to spending and taxes and so forth in 83, that maybe they will then get the confidence to come down. Here's why inflation pushes interest rates up. If you have money to lend, and when I told you a little while ago about the dollar losing its value, 
If you're going to lend money, say on a mortgage over 20 years, and every year your dollar is going to lose a little of its value to where at the end of 20 years, it's only worth about that much of what it was when, when you loaned it. You have to get enough interest to compensate for that loss in the value of the dollar, and then on top of that, get the normal rate of interest as a return on your lending the money. So when interest rates were 12.4, they had to start with charging 12.4 in the interest just to meet inflation, and then on top of that, how much more they wanted to make or earn on their money. Well, now that's down to 4.5. By all rules, the interest rates should be down much lower than they are. But as I say, they're just fearful, and until we can convince them that we really mean it, to stick with our program, uh, they won't come down. Although the other day, a banker in a little town in Indiana did something I recommend to a lot of bankers, to help the automobile dealers. He put $2 million of the bank's money up for loan and lowered the interest rates 4% below what the market rate is today, provided they borrowed the money to buy automobiles. And people are flocking there to get those loans at the lower interest rate and buy automobiles. Could you please explain Reaganomics to us, to us in a brief summary that we can understand? Reaganomics. <laughs> I didn't give it that name. <laughs> I think some of the people around the room here helped create that name. Um, no, it's basically a theory. I, my degree in college was in economics. And I remember studying how the classic economists back at the turn of the century always believed that these cycles of recession and hard times and so forth came when government took too much out of the private sector. Well, now government has been doing that, as I said before. What we are doing is trying to reduce government spending to where we stop having the constant deficits that are just built into our system. When the federal government has to go into the money market and borrow a lot of money, to pay the deficit that it's spending more than it takes in. Then that helps push interest rates up just from supply and demand. Uh, there's, there are more people out there wanting to borrow than there is money to borrow when the government is taking the biggest share of it. So the other thing was to provide incentive again so that people would be willing to invest, to uh, businesses get money to expand and to, to grow by selling stock or by borrowing in the market. And so we have cut the individual tax rates to give the individual an incentive to, uh, to work, to be willing to work overtime if he's asked to. When the tax rates are too high, there's no incentive for people to do that. A person says, I'd rather go fishing because if I work to earn that extra dollar, I have to give so much of it to the government. I, I saw an example of that very often in Hollywood in the old days when there were income tax rates as high as 90%. And you'd be offered a picture, to play a role in a picture. And you'd already knew that your earnings had pushed you up in that 90% tax bracket. So all you'd get was 10 cents on the dollar if you made the picture. So he said, I'm not going to make the picture. And so our, it is a combination of reducing government spending and reducing taxes on individuals and the punitive taxes that were assessed against business. So that business can afford to expand, modernize. <laughs> Mr. President, can the federal government support Catholic education or schools? Can the federal government support Catholic education or schools? I, I didn't get the right the phrase there in the last I heard, but I what? Can the federal government government support Catholic education or schools? Support Catholic education of schools. Uh, no, this is ruled to be the separation of church and state, uh, that they, they can't do that. But this is why we're proposing a program that we think will help uh, by getting the aid through the tax credits directly to the parents, and that this will uh, help solve the problem. I think both can benefit because in that regard uh, there could be tuition tax increases without penalizing the parent at all because uh, it's, uh, it's a grant, it's, it's money that would 
Otherwise, we're going to taxes. President, I'm trying to pass a bill. Have you ever wanted to add or subtract amendments? Oh, yes. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, when I was governor in California, the governor had the right of what's known as line item veto. And so you could veto parts of a bill or even part of the spending in a bill. The president can't do that. Uh, the president must take the bill as it comes to him and either veto the entire bill. So there's grown up in the federal government uh, a little device whereby they hang an amendment of something that you really wouldn't want someone particularly wants if they want it. They hang it on a bill that you just cannot veto, uh, some very necessary bill, and thus they get it passed. I, I think Frankly, of course, I'm prejudiced. I think government would be far better off if the president had the right of line item veto. Mr. President, I think maybe one more question according to your time schedule. Who has, who has the best question there? Well, it's, it's probably could I, there were two hands went up almost two. identical at the time. Could I take those one two if I make it short? Of course, Mr. President. Right. Mr. President, what can be done to bring the cost of education down so that the children in the middle income group can attend college? Well, the cost of education has, again, been a result of inflation. And as we cure inflation, uh, that is partly resolved. But our program has been quite misunderstood of loans and grants to college students in demonstrated need who could not otherwise go. And that program has in it uh, something in the neighborhood of $12 billion. The federal government is providing some seven million loans and grants for the roughly 11 million college students that there are in the country. And all the student has to do is prove uh, that they have, uh, that otherwise they couldn't go. And in proving that need, it will not only depend on the family's income, but also the number of children in the family to be educated, whether there are any unusual medical problems and so forth. So there is that kind of aid, but in addition, there are all kinds of other scholarship programs and uh, even independent loan programs. There was no such thing as a federal program when I went to school, but I had to work my way through school. In fact, I washed dishes in a girl's dormitory. And uh, I also had to borrow before I got out, but I borrowed from a private foundation that was set up where people contribute the money to a foundation just to lend, and then you pay the money back after you get out of school. So I think that there are uh, sizable and, and good aid programs and even 